Well, good day and welcome on this 1st of November 2020. You know, we are now in Wales on our second week of lockdown. And for many, this has been a traumatic time. And, you know, there is a case of when is all this going to end? Well, today we're looking at Galatians 5.22 and it says this, that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, and the next word is long-suffering. And that's what we're going to look at today. So it's probably the right one for the right time here in Wales. And you know, we have said from the beginning that the fruit of the Holy Spirit is actually the character of God being expressed through those that love him. And when we look at the scripture, if we are to understand what long suffering is about, we have to look at the very nature of God and what God says about himself and his heart for us. And so we have to go right back to Exodus 34, verses 6 and 7, and it's there that we find the very first time that the word long-suffering is used in the English Bible. And it is this, Moses has asked to see God. He knew that God existed, God had spoken to his heart already, and had called him and he'd gone into Egypt and brought the Israelites out of Egypt by the mighty hand of God and by the blood of the Lamb. And Moses met with the Lord on the mountain, Mount Sinai. And when he was there, he said to the Lord, Lord, I wish to see you. And the Lord said, well, no one can see me and live because of the, the sinfulness of man. But he said, I will give you a glimpse of my glory and he hid Moses in a, a cleft of a rock and then he passed by and this is what the scripture says in verse 6 of Exodus 34 and the Lord passed before him and proclaimed the Lord the Lord God merciful and gracious long suffering and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. But he also adds this, but by no means clearing the guilty. So God's character is one of ultimate holiness and righteousness. It is a character that is full, abounding in goodness and truth. It is a character that keeps mercy for many. And it is a character that is merciful and gracious and long suffering. Now, the term of that word sounds as if you're going to be suffering long. And in many ways, that is how this word can be used. Because God had seen the wickedness of his people and he was putting up with them. But he tells them, at this moment, there is goodness, truth, mercy, grace, all those things. But there's going to come a time when I will by no means clear the guilty. Whoa. So God says at the moment you have my grace and my mercy and I'm, I'm long suffering towards you. I'm putting up with you, he says. But that time will come when I will not put up with it any longer. You know, well, Many would respond to that and say, well, actually, I, I'm not to be counted among those who are uh, full of iniquity and transgression and sin. You know, I'm, I'm good enough. 
But actually, in Romans chapter 2, Paul, on this very subject, uh, was talking to the Romans and saying to them, Look, uh, do you think, O man, that you who judge those who practice wrong, you say, well, I'm better than them, you know, and doing the same yourself, that you will escape the judgment of God. Whoa. Paul says, hang on a minute. While you're looking at others and say, well, I'm not as bad as them, I'm a good guy, you know. He's saying, well, actually, our hearts are the same because we have all gone astray from God. On the way, the way that Paul put it here, it says, or do you despise the riches of the goodness, forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. What Paul is saying is God is long-suffering towards us because he desires us and wants to lead us to repentance. That means asking forgiveness and wanting to get our lives right with God. There was a song that was by Blind Faith and it was, I can't find my way home. And at the end, part of the song says this, and I ain't done nothing wrong, you know, but I can't find my way home. And sometimes that's us. We, we can't find our way to God, but we don't want to acknowledge that we ourselves have gone from God. There are others that think not that they haven't done anything wrong, but actually that they've done so much that God could never forgive them, that there would never be mercy and grace and forgiveness for them, that they've gone too far. Well, Paul was writing about that too. And he wrote in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 15 to 16, he said this, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. That's why he came, to save us. But he added this, of whom I am chief. In other words, Paul says, there's no one as bad as me. Well, you know, guys, I, I, I feel, that, feel that in my life. There's no one as bad as me, you know. I don't feel like a good guy. And I think, well, what hope is there? for me. But he says this, however, however, for this reason I obtained mercy. Paul says, I, the chief of sinners, have now obtained mercy. Well, why? That in me, says Paul, that in me first Jesus Christ might show all long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. In other words, Paul says, Jesus saved me, the chief of sinners, and the reason he did it is he wanted everyone to know that it doesn't matter how far you've gone, that you can return to God and know his forgiveness and everlasting life when you believe in him. But there are others that say, well, he's not coming back anyway. He won't come. Look, he told us 2,000 years ago that he was going to come back, but he hasn't come yet. There's no chance he's going to come. Well, the first thing I would say to you is just look around you and see what's happening in the world. Well, let's think about that for a moment. But then it, there's another passage that says this. Uh, Peter, the other apostle that we've mentioned before, Peter, when he had heard people say, well, where is the promise of his coming? Where is he then? You know, if he's going to turn up and judge us, where is he? This is what Peter said. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. It's in 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is what? long-suffering toward us. Hallelujah.
that he is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all, that means you and me and the guy next door, that means that all should come to repentance. You see, the character of God, and that's why we're looking at this bit so far. The character of God is that he doesn't want to punish anybody. And so he holds back his judgment, waiting for us to come to him. You know, sometimes I think when I look at my life, when I know that I could have been, you know, dead on the road uh, on my motorbike many times. I look at my life and I say, well, why, why did you not let me die at that time? Why, why did you hold back? And it is because his desire is that I would come to repentance, that I would come to know the mercy and the grace and the love of God. You see, that's God's heart. God's heart is long suffering. Now, what, how does that become then the fruit of God's Holy Spirit in us? How are we then to show that long suffering? How does it flow? Well, the first thing for me is that I know how much I have been forgiven. I know how much patience God had with me before I came to know him. I know the love that God has poured out in my heart. And guys, I would want to say that because God has poured out that long suffering toward us so that we might know his mercy and his grace, how much then are we to pour out his long suffering from us to those around us that are giving us grief? to those around us that are turning their backs on us, to those around us that hate us with a passion for one reason or another. That we would be long-suffering towards those that have even sinned against us. You see, in Ephesians 4 verses 1 and 2, Paul said this. This is how the fruit of God is expressed. This is it. Walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. You see, God bore with us because He loved us so much. And you know, friend, God loves you so much that he is holding back judgment from you so that you would know that his long suffering and the goodness of God would lead you to repentance as well. But friend, there is a, a flip side to this. And you may think this strange, but there is a sense in which we need to have long suffering with God. Because for those of us who know and love the Lord Jesus, we look around us and see the mess. And we want to say, Lord, take us home. You know, we want to be with you. We want to be with, in glory with you. But in many ways, we share in the sufferings of Christ by putting up with what's going on around us. So that we might have the same heart that others would come to know him. So that we put up with what is going on simply because our desire would be his desire to see people saved. To see people come to know his love. And as we have that long suffering with the time that God is giving this world. We read in scripture this. In Isaiah 30, 18, God gives us a hint there. It says, therefore... The Lord will wait. So the Lord is waiting for us to come to him. That he may be gracious to you. You see the Lord's holding back. That he might be gracious to you. And therefore he will be exalted. It will be his character that will be in us. That he may have mercy on you. 
for the Lord is a God of justice. You see, justice is coming. Judgment is coming. But God in his love for you and his grace to you will wait that he may have mercy on you. And then it says this, it's a flip, it tips over and it says this, Blessed are all those who wait for him. You see, those that now love the Lord Jesus, we are to be patient and long-suffering towards God's coming. Toward the coming of the Lord Jesus. We look for it, but we are to be patient and hold the same love in our heart for those that do not yet know him as he has for them. But friend, that's hard, isn't it? Wow. It's hard when you see the lockdowns. It's hard when you see people dying from this virus. It's hard when you see the whole world falling apart around us. But when David cried out to the Lord in that, in that sense of oh, desperation, in Psalm 27 verse 13, David said this, I would have lost heart. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Friend, in closing of this short message today, I would plead with you, wait on the Lord. He's been waiting for you for so long. In Isaiah, it, it says, therefore the Lord will wait. He's been waiting for you. But now it's for you to turn to him because he's not willing that any should perish. Turn to him. Say, Lord, I don't understand all this. I don't know the full picture, but I want to know you. Lord, I want to know you and your salvation. I want to know you and your love and your grace and your mercy. And Lord, I need your forgiveness. <coughs> as we do that, friend, as we come before the Lord, he has made a, a tremendous promise for us. And this is how I'm going to end today. In Isaiah 40, verse 31, his promise to all those who wait for him is this, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Don't you just need that today? They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Friend, in other words, God, as you call upon him, as you cry out in the name of Jesus, he will give you the strength moment by moment through the next days because we would have lost heart unless we had believed that we would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Well, may the Lord bless his word to our hearts. I'm going to ask you to come and pray for us now. Father God, we thank you for the wonderful privilege that we have of coming to you. We thank you, Lord, for your love for us, for your care for us, for your protection, and also for your long suffering. Thank you, Lord, that you are so patient with us. When, Lord, we choose our own way, when we do our own things, and, Lord, uh, just turn our backs on you and ignore the things that you have stated in your word. Lord, you are so patient with us. We thank you that, Lord, your love just overwhelms us and your patience, Lord, is there for us. Father, we pray that we would learn this week of being more patient. We know, Lord, that there are many things that will challenge us this week, particularly through this lockdown. 
There are many things, Lord, that uh, would bring us down, that would cause us to feel hurt or pain or, uh, Lord, just uh, not being in that place where we are free. But, Lord, I pray that you would teach us your patience. Father, we thank you that we can come to you in these times of difficulties, in these times, Lord, when lives are so much at risk and, Lord, situations that we face are so challenging. Father God, I pray that we would know your patience just as you are so patient with us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Vue. And as we share together in this wonderful song, cry out to the Lord and allow his peace to come to you. <laughs> 